Hello everyone. Hello. So Angus and I were having dinner with our daughters the other night and we ended up um, having a conversation about dating and things like that and I got accused of being nosy because I was trying to see if there was anything happening in their lives on that front and they are adamant that it isn't. So I guess that's what's going on. So we ended up talking about our teenage years. Yeah, but I think I posed the question was how how actually do you meet boys? How do you all get together? How does that all unfold, at, you know, in this day and age? And because they weren't very forthcoming, it, the tables got turned on us, or me in particular. <laughs> and I was talking about how back in my day, back in the dark ages, um, we used to have things like school discos. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I was like, school discos? Yeah, discos was the thing, uh, discos were, was where it was at back in the 70s. But so that wasn't the most shocking thing about your discos. Oh yeah, it was, it was the fact that, um, that the way that you, um, and, 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 the way, and the term that was used, got off with a girl, did you get off with a girl last night? Was that you would wait for that moment in the evening when the DJ would play uh, a slow record. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go rushing up to the girl that you liked and ask them to dance. And then if they liked you back, then uh, then you could start snogging. But these girls are people that you maybe never yeah, even met before. Yeah, you didn't know them from Adam. <laughs> 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 and the funny thing about that was that you could actually, uh, on some occasion, be engaged in this very uh, ferocious act of snogging. <laughs> And then the, the record would finish and then you would just say, thank you very much, and walk off back to the other side of the room. <laughs> How very British of you. I know, it was very British, but surprising, you know, this is surprising level of intimacy followed by this slight surprising level of disconnect. But then you did get your heart broken. I did. I did in no uncertain terms. And um, I still, still, <laughs> I still feel hurt Sorry, by it. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you cry, <laughs> Those memories still keep flooding back. No, it was this, uh, it was at the school disco, and at the time I was this sort of chubby little youth who was constantly made fun of, because I don't think I'd really gone through puberty at that point. I think I was about 15. And everyone used to make fun of me. Mm. I was short, I was fat, and uh, baby I didn't... Face. Baby face. I was called baby face, mm. which I think was abbreviated to baby. It was, it was abbreviated to baby. Um, but anyway, I did grow finally, all you people out there who are mean to me. Um, but there was this girl that I, that, that, that I went over to ask to dance, and, and luckily for me she said yes, and even more luckier for me, she actually uh, wanted to kiss me. I mean, I don't, it wasn't like, um, I mean, it was... We don't need the details. There were no we tongues. We don't need the details. <laughs> We just basically sucked each other's faces for about five minutes okay. for the duration of the record and then for about, I don't know, about an hour afterwards. Anyway, I thought it was love and fireworks and then uh, when, you know, when I called her up about a week later and I had to get her number off her, her brother who was also at the school, I called her up a week later and um, I started off the conversation by saying, what did you think about the other night? And she's like, it's all, it was all right. <laughs> and it was just such Aww. a crushing, deflating, Aww. awful experience and she was horrible. And um, I got off the phone and thought, I'm never going to do that again. And, um, and I, think, I didn't think I did that again until I was about 28. <laughs> Call a girl. <laughs> but no, funny enough, um, some while later, when I actually grew to a normal size for my age, <laughs> And then I met this girl who I liked and uh, I wanted to call her up and ask her out on a date. Um, I was so afraid to do that that I got my best friend John to do it and he called her up instead of me. <laughs> and what's funny about that is John has a very, or had a very gruff personality and, and, um, and was, had absolutely no thinking on doing that and just agreed to it right away. But he would have rung her up and said, hello, do you want to go out on a date? I'll pick you up at eight tomorrow night. And that would have been the extent of it. And luckily she said yes, and we ended up going out. <laughs> but um, oh, I was terrified of calling girls. It was just, I would get into a cold sweat about that. It was awful. It was just as well that I asked you out. It is. But um, I was, I think by that point, I'd, 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 I'd got, got over, over myself. It by then? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And also I think it was just that you, you put me 
to the post, I think that I was going to ask you out, but you got there first. You say that now. I say that now. <laughs> anyway, maybe it's just as well that you weren't so great at dating earlier on. I might not have met you. Yeah, yeah there is that to it. You never know. I'll you know, you know never know. You never know. But what you're talking about, all that insecure thinking that people get caught up in, that's why there's all these kind of dating manuals and books and programs because it's like how, how else are we supposed to deal with those thoughts it's like we come up with a technique to try and manage them and and ultimately though really once we sort of let go of that thinking or see that it's just thought we're able to hear our own inner wisdom and that's what guides us like when I asked you out it was just common sense I met you I liked you I knew that you weren't going to be in town for long because you're traveling and so I thought oh I'll ask him out and I'm sure, you know, 10 dating books would tell me that you should never ask a guy out, that that's the wrong thing to do. But ultimately, it's our wisdom real time that guides us in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, there's all sorts of techniques out there to overcome that situation. And the one that springs readily, readily to mind is the, the idea that you should feel the fear and do it anyway. But, uh, but really, it's for me now, through the lens through which I see the see the situation now is you just you feel your thinking and you don't take it seriously yeah, yeah because feeling the fear that doesn't you know the fear could be so huge that it'll prevent you from doing anything it's all very well to say oh feel the fear and do it anyway but once you see that it's a case of you feeling your thinking in the moment and actually there is something greater with inside you with inside every each and every one of us mm -hmm. you know this sense of our own wisdom that will guide you through every, each and every situation, each and every obstacle that you may confront in whatever scenario. But in this case, it's in the dating scene. The idea that you can actually just get a sense that it's only your thinking, and that it's only your thinking that's holding you back, and that, that, that you will actually negotiate your way through whatever fate throws in your way, and, uh, and, and you'll get through it. And even with what happened when you had all that thinking, your wisdom still managed to figure out how to get that your friend. That was a great. Call. That was a great solution. Yeah. Yeah. And wasn't she your first girlfriend? She was my first girlfriend. Yeah. So. Yeah. It all worked out. It did. All right. Well, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye.